Hi, and welcome to a guide to the Marshall Scholarship interview process. My name is Andrew Horden. And I'm the coordinator for the New York region for the Marshall Scholarship. I have with me two Marshall Scholarship alumni who are both members of Marshall Scholarship selection committees around the United States. I'll first go to Dr. Avery Willis Hoffman to uh, introduce herself. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Avery Willis Hoffman and I'm a Marshall from the year 2000. And I did my DPhil in classical languages and literature at Balliol College, uh, Oxford University. And I am currently the program director at the Park Avenue Armory in New York City, which is a multidisciplinary art center. And I am a member of the New York Region uh, Marshall Selection Committee. Excellent. And our other doctor on the call, Dr. Anna Kuter from the DC region. Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Anna Kuiter. I'm a 2007 Marshall Scholarship alum. Um, I did my PhD in astronomy at the University of Cambridge at the Institute of Astronomy. Um, I'm presently the Assistant Vice President for Federal Relations at Northern Illinois University, and I serve on the DC Regional Marshall Selection Committee. Excellent. We thought this is a good opportunity to bring you both together because Anna comes from the, the science background, Avery comes from the arts background, two uh, diverging uh, backgrounds in terms of what we're doing this, but both play a very important role in our Marshall Scholarship interview processes and have been around and seen the processes for a number of years so that they can describe what goes on. Uh, so based on that, uh, I, my first question will go to Anna and then Avery can come on uh, afterwards to talk about it. So. Let's say that you're a student, you've just received a request to interview for the Marshall Scholarship. Who will be on the panel that you go, that you sit for the Marshall Scholarship in? Well, each panel has um, a different composition. So there's, uh, it's, we don't have the same individuals serving um, on the panels in each region. Um, what I encourage you to do is first thing is to go and look up the Marshall Annual Report. It's available on the Marshall Scholarship website. And in that annual report, you can scroll down and you can actually find the list of the individuals who serve on the selection committee for the previous year. So there is some continuity between, um, between scholarship years and who serves on the committee. It won't be all necessarily all of the same people, although it could be. Um, so that's the first thing I would do. So that will tell you right there, those individuals. What you'll notice when you do that is that it's a mix um, of uh, former Marshall scholars, so Marshall alumni, as well as on some regions, you'll have individuals who have not, uh, are not Marshall scholars or alumni. Um, you can, the expertise that each individual brings is generally crafted so that the selection committee has a wide breadth of experience as well as content expertise. So, um, and that is because the Marshall, as you know, um, is open to any major it, to apply for. So we need to make sure that the selection committee can accommodate um, everything from physicists to opera singers. Anything John, I would just, yeah, I would just add to that um, that there's also a range of ages, right? So you'll get uh, different generations of Marshall scholars, some of the younger Marshall scholars who have just gone through the experience, uh, ranging from those who, who've been um, out of their uh, experiences in the UK for a long time. So you get a nice perspective and a range of perspectives and experiences in the UK. So that's just something to consider as you're, as you're beginning to prepare for your interview. Wonderful. So you've gone on, you've, you've, you've got an interview, you've worked out who, you, who your panelists roughly are. Anna, what's the, what should you do to try and prepare? How, uh, so I'll take this, how do you, how do you prepare in general? And also how, how should you prepare in relation to keeping up with current UK US events? I'm sure the first thing that I recommend in preparing is to know your application. Please make sure that you know your application in and out. Um, any information that is provided in your application is open for questions. Um, and it could be everything from, um, you know, you've done, you mentioned that you have traveled a lot. People could, you could be asked about the cities that you've visited or the, the people that you've met or what you've learned in your travels. Um, if you know a language, you could be asked about your language to demonstrate your language experience. Um, if you mention um, details about your, um, about your, your life circumstances. Um, that could be something, you know, not in a uh, inappropriate way, but if you put it in the application, it can be a topic of discussion. And of course, um, secondly, make sure that you are up to speed with your content area. 
Um, as I mentioned, we have subject matter expertise from a, a wide cross section. So the chances are there is somebody who at least directly or um, peripherally is an expert in your area. So please make sure that you have, um, have really spent time getting up to speed on your content area and, um, and what is going on in that, in that space. Um, third, I think that you should um, spend time, and, and we will get to this later, I think, but make sure that you spend time really critically thinking about um, what kinds of questions would you ask somebody who has your application. So, um, for example, myself, I was a triple major. I majored in physics and astronomy, the history and philosophy of science, and religious studies. It is an obvious question to ask somebody how they come to study three very different subject areas and why I would choose to do that and how that relates to my future academic plan. So be critical and kind of put yourself in somebody else's shoes looking at your application materials and think about what makes you unique, what makes you um, um, interesting, and how that will, um, will further the goals of the Marshall Scholarship Program. To that second point, um, it is important to be up to date with US, UK current events, especially again in your subject area. Um, I think that there is a lot going on right now in geopolitics and in the US, UK relationship. Um, and we ex I, I expect students to be able to um, have familiarity with the major um, political questions that are happening over in the UK. Um, there are significant dynamics at, at work, and you should be prepared to discuss those, um, especially as they relate to your subject matter area. So, for example, how will um, the science community be affected when the UK leaves the EU? considering that a lot of funding for British science is related to being in the EU. I mean, that's a, to me, that's a question that you should be prepared to answer from the, from the science perspective. Wonderful, Avery? Yeah, thank you, Anna. Those, those are really good um, points of advice. And I would just say also, what is not in your application? So, you know, Anna mentioned some things that we know when we read an application, we were curious about and we want to hear more, but what, what did you leave out? What is something you sort of have in your back pocket that you can share that, again, as Anna said, can really differentiate you from other candidates? Um, that's something we, we often think about, that there's a, a great deal of preparation that goes into applications and you can't get it all in. So what is it that you want to share that, that you haven't shared already? And then I think on the point on the US-UK uh, relations, I think beyond also the, the geopolitical and your subject area, really understanding who are the folks in the UK universities that you uh, are applying to or that you're interested in, you've noted as your first and second choices, uh, who, what are they doing? What are, what are the, the innovations that they're making so far uh, currently? What are the types of things that they are um, exploring in their own research so that you can really answer and hopefully you've been in touch with them and you can answer questions about the types of uh, professors that you'll be working with or researchers or labs, etc. I think it's very important that you have a good understanding of, of the current, not sort of 10 years ago, but the current um, research. So I would just add, add that to your, your thoughts there, Anna. I agree. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, now, now we'll come on to Avery, um, getting the first go at answering a couple of questions. So for Avery, um, Anna touched on this, and it's a, a good question. What sort of practice interview questions will be most useful for preparing for your interview? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, as we mentioned earlier, you know, each committee is a little bit different. So um, one of the things that I know is, is a really, really helpful thing is to actually have uh, professors that you know well or who know you well to, to set you up in a practice interview environment. So it's great if your roommate can help you or a friend, but trying to set up a, an environment in which uh, you're essentially setting up what the, the environment that you'll be in when you come into an interview. So you kind of get a sense, you know, you get dressed, you get prepared in a way that you would so practice that a couple times and perhaps even with different folks uh, in your, your academic life or in your personal life so that you get um, some good environmental challenges um, to start with. 
And then I think in terms of practice questions, some of the things that we've mentioned already, you know, just be sure that you can set up for yourself uh, questions about your application, question about your research or the work that you're working in, um, if you're in the arts, um, any kinds of programs that you've been participating in, make sure that you're able to answer these questions in detail and not with a general approach, but in detail. Um, and so, you know, getting sort of a list of questions beforehand that you can talk through with your sort of practice interviewers uh, is super helpful. Uh, I think the third thing is to, to ask your practice interviewees to, to throw you some cur curveballs, you know, throw you some uh, questions that may um, initially rattle you a little bit and, and it helps you practice um, responding with ease, taking a moment to think about your answers, uh, and also just gives you uh, a, a, an opportunity to think quickly and to practice doing that. And then I think the last thing would be just to, to do as many as rounds as you can because practice does help and it's okay if it feels a little rocky at the beginning, but I think once you go through the process a couple times, you'll gain that confidence and uh, that, that's something that of course will be key to, to your success. Um, so I think those are some of the things, of course there's lots of other ways to prepare, but maybe Anna has some, some ideas as well. Uh, Avery, I think that you you've hit on definitely all of the major the major points. Um, I would just add a couple of additional little details in there. Um, in terms of um, the environment, um, I think it's imperative that you practice with a clock. Make sure that you are prepared um, to do your interview within 30 minutes or less. Um, that you know being being on time is really important because we have a lot of interviews to do um, and where we pack in our days so please make sure that you are um, you are punctual and you are on time and have you know practice getting that in um, secondly um, as I mentioned earlier we talked about the interview panel is a broad range of expertise so I think it's really important to practice presenting your subject matter expertise for expert and for non-expert audiences um, that would be, you know, it's the kind of thing where certainly, as Avery mentioned, getting professors who know you really well to, to interview you, but also make sure that you're talking to maybe faculty or friends or, you know, other people in your life who aren't very familiar with your work and make sure that you can explain it in a way that's accessible and engaging for them as well. Um, I would also add to, to Avery's point, um, Make sure not only do you get practice with curveball questions, but also with, um, you know, encourage people to kind of go hard on you a little bit. Um, you know, you're, we can't tell you, you know, there's, as you'll see when you look up the list, there's, you know, dozens of different people who serve on these selection committees. Everybody brings their own interests and, and technique and experience as an interviewer. So make sure that you're prepared for whatever they're going to throw at you with the content questions, but also style, interview style can vary widely from in between individuals and between committees. So try to get a little practice on, on that piece as well. And then finally, in terms of a question that I, I encourage you to have hopefully already thought deeply about, um, but be prepared to discuss why the UK, why the Marshall Scholarship, why is why is this program that you've applied to why why is that the best fit for your academic future and your goals why is the marshall scholarship a good fit for you and why is the united kingdom the country where you want to study i think that if you can answer those um, i think that that will really set you up well for um, being in the right mindset for your marshall interview wonderful thank you both very much I'd like to uh, add, go on to another question to Avery, which I think is of interest to everyone in every circumstance in terms of what we're doing in relation to an interview or anything like this. Avery, how do I deal with nerves or imposter syndrome? Yeah, that's, that's a serious question, Andrew. Um, it, I think there's a lot of different ways. And I think knowing how you personally deal with nerves uh, or imposter syndrome is something that is really, really helpful to know prior to your, to, to your interview. Um, because um, some people, for example, some people really rely on meditation. So prior to an interview, just taking a minute, even if it's in the, in the bathroom or you know, on your way to the interview, just taking some, some very deep breaths to meditate, um, to clear your mind of uh, a lot of imposing things that are, are coming in and out as a result of you 
you know, coming to the interview. Um, I think also just coming early is very, very helpful. So even if you come early, you know where you're going, you, you get a sense of like, this is where I'm going to say hello. Uh, this, is, this is where the restrooms are. So just kind of getting a little bit of the lay of the land so that when you arrive, you're prepared. You've, you've um, you know, if you've had to travel, you've had a minute to, to take, uh, to take some, some time. Um, that also will clear nerves. I think the other thing is to, um, is to just, uh, some people really, really need to just almost have a crib sheet, you know, of their questions, a crib sheet of, it all depends on who you are, right? Some, some folks um, really do need the assurance uh, or read the, the newspaper that day, for example, and just kind of get in your mind some of the current events that are going on, especially if something very big happens in US-UK relations, it might just be top of mind for the interviewers. So just getting positioned, giving yourself a little bit of time before going into the interview, um, certainly rushing in um, sort of hot off the subway or from public transportation just will add to uh, an environment that isn't uh, as supportive of, of your best best moment probably. Um, so those would be a couple of things but I think knowing you yourself how you get rid of nerves um, is, is probably the first thing to do. Um, yeah so I, I'll stop there but maybe Anna has ideas as well. I think those are all excellent tips. Um, I, the only thing that I would say or that I would add is we are excited to meet you. Yes. We want to meet you. We, we have spent a long time reading through your application, coming to know it in detail. Um, I hope that doesn't intimidate you. I hope that makes you feel welcome and makes you feel excited to have a, a, a deep conversation with us. Um, we really want to explore your ideas. We wanna hear what you think. You are enough the way that you are. Um, your application is enough. We want to, to hear from you. And I hope that that um, will make you bring your authentic self. Um, don't, you know, I, I would say, sometimes I think that, you know, nerves and imposter syndrome can get really out of hand when you feel like you need to be this other version of you, this, you know, what, whatever that is for you. Um, and, and for, I think that, you know, bring your authentic self. We want to get to know you. And we're, we're really excited. Yeah, and I would just add to that. I think that's a really good point. I would add that, you know, you you have come a long way. You know, you get to the interview process and we've read many, many applications by this point. And so you really have come to a moment where we, as, as Anna said, we're very excited to meet you and you've, you have proved yourself already. So the, the proving of oneself in the interview isn't necessarily um, something that you have to do. I think explaining, um, you know, giving more information, giving different information is certainly helpful, but know that you've made a long way through a long process already. And so enjoy that. I think bringing joy to an interview will also help dispel nerves, um, being excited about what you're doing and excited about your future and your potential future in the UK. I think that kind of enthusiasm and joy uh, will also help us feel joyful about you. Um, so that's another way to just, also that makes things go very fast. <laughs> Sometimes getting like really worked up into a, a knot will slow everything down. So that joy will, will also uh, help your interview go super quickly. And before you know it, you'll, you'll be um, yeah, on your way. And, and so I think it is important to think about uh, tone and um, energy as you come into the space. I think that's very wise, Avery. I'd also like to include a bit from my perspective. So I'm not part of an interview panel. I'm not in the room, but I'm outside the room and I'm talking to the candidates before they go in. And there's one thing which I've noted, which I, I recommend. Avery touched on the point of arriving early, and I think it's very important that you arrive early before your application to give yourself a bit of time. You don't want to be doing things at the just tell you. But do not arrive too early, because one of the big problems which I found from different candidates is when they run into other candidates. And when they do that, and they, or if they're very early, they might even strike up a conversation, even though we try and keep them apart from things in this circumstance. I think they get intimidated by each other. It's not to say one's better than the other, but because they could be in to I mean, like you two, they could be in totally different fields. But by feeling that you're competing against this person, oh wow, this person's such a scientific genius. Oh wow, this person's an artistic genius. You can end up putting yourself down in terms of the circumstances. 
So I would recommend, yeah, arrive early, arrive your 15 minutes early, which is generally what we prescribe, uh, but, don't, uh, but don't arrive too early to run the bill. And don't, as I've seen, heard some people do, don't go up to people on the street and ask them if they're Marshall Scholarship candidates. So if you arrive early, uh, go and check out the office, go and check out the office, check out where you're going if you're doing an in-person interview, um, um, and then, and then yeah, go and settle down. Um, of course, this year, we will have to wait for this year's et cetera in terms of virtual versus um, physical interviews. But in, the, in a future event, if you have a physical in interview, I would strongly recommend make sure you're early, but not too early and not going to be. Thank you both very much. Into this. I'll, I'll just end up, do, uh, Anna first, do you have any final comments you'd like to make on any of the topics that we've covered? Just to say congratulations on getting your Marshall interview. Um, and I know that your selection committee is really looking forward to meeting you. Avery? Yes, agree. Congratulations. And I think it's, it's an amazing moment in time. <laughs> it is 2020 and, you know, there's so much ahead of us and so much to look back on. So, you know, we're, we're excited for this next generation of, of Marshall Scholars to come to be. And so, uh, yes, congratulations. Excellent. Thank you both very much for attending and thank you for listening. Uh, we will be putting this, this on the Marshall Scholarship website and we strongly recommend that you go there to have a look at the other resources which are available to help you with the situation. But thank you very much for listening.